So, good morning, dear students, dear colleagues. Uh, this is our, our last lecture in this uh, semester, in this year. And uh, uh, today we will uh, just shortly, uh, we will overview shortly uh, what we know, what are the uh, relationship between uh, our uh, knowledges. And uh, yeah, as uh, far as uh, it is uh, very close uh, to the end of the year, uh, you know, we have this uh, very nice Christmas tree. And uh, what we know from uh, this semester, uh, first of all, uh, we know uh, the inf information about the phenomenon of uh, radioactivity, uh, that it is spontaneous process uh, uh, that is uh, accompanied by the release of the energy, the release of the particles, and uh, that if we know uh, the characteristics of a radionuclide, we can uh, calculate it, its activity from its mass or uh, vice versa, we can calculate the mass uh, from its activity. And we know uh, different uh, types of uh, decay, alpha decay, beta decay, gamma uh, decay and spontaneous fusion. And uh, we know the consequences of these um, uh, processes. We know uh, how um, the composition of uh, nucleus is changing due to the, all these uh, processes. Uh, how we change the chemical composition of our material uh, due to the uh, radioactive decay. And uh, due to the different properties uh, of the uh, released uh, uh, radiation, uh, released ionizing radiation, we can uh, uh, use them in different applications. Uh, alpha, beta and gamma emitters we can use in nuclear medicine and uh, alpha and beta emitters we can use uh, for therapy and uh, gamma uh, emitters and some, some of the beta emitters like beta plus emitters we can use for uh, diagnostics. Uh, why it is so? Because uh, all these different kind of uh, released radiation, they have absolutely different properties. And if alpha and beta uh, particles, uh, they are absorbed uh, completely by the uh, human body, that means that all this energy we can uh, use for killing of um, the bad cells and the bad uh, tissues. And uh, gamma rays and uh, and the gamma rays that are formed due to the annihilation of beta plus particles, uh, they have very uh, high penetration uh, ability, and thus they can uh, go from our body, and we can detect the location of the uh, radionuclides and and their quantity. And spontaneous, uh, spontaneous fission, of course, uh, we can use for uh, nuclear energy production uh, in nuclear power plants. But uh, any kind of uh, application of uh, uh, radioactive substances or ionizing radiation will lead us to formation of the uh, radioactive waste or the uh, facilities that uh, in some cases are contaminated with the uh, radionuclides. And thus, after uh, when the uh, operation of these facilities uh, uh, are very close uh, to its end, uh, we are thinking about the uh, decommissioning. So all these uh, properties, uh, starting uh, even from uh, such a fundamental um, the term uh, definition of uh, radioactivity uh, leads us uh, to the uh, decommissioning. So it is uh, very, I, I hope that uh, after this uh, semester you uh, have this uh, clear relationship between different properties of the uh, radionuclides and uh, uh, the properties that we are using uh, for uh, in different applications. And uh, due to the uh, radioactive um, decay, uh, there is not only the formation of some stable uh, nucleus after the uh, radioactive decay, but it can be a prolonged uh, chain of the uh, radioactive decays. And thus, uh, we can form uh, a chain of um, um, radioactive decay, either it can be uh, natural 
chains or it can be um, uh, chains uh, that are formed uh, by the technogenic uh, radionuclides. And uh, why it is important? It is important to understand that uh, due to the uh, decay of our initial uh, radionuclide, uh, we can form uh, not only uh, just the next uh, radionuclide after uh, our parent or radionuclide, but uh, a very uh, wide variety of different uh, radionuclides that, that are differ not only by the uh, physical, uh, nuclear physical properties like uh, half-life or type of decay, but also they are just uh, another chemical elements and thus uh, they behave uh, absolutely differently uh, from the uh, our parental, our initial uh, uh, radionuclide. And thus uh, we can use it. Uh, I, sometimes it can be a problem uh, because uh, we would like to put our uh, nuclide in, in one form and that all the uh, radionuclides that are forming due to the um, decay chain, uh, they should be also uh, chemically stable in this form, uh, but it's not always uh, the case. So, so sometimes it, it is uh, problematic when we are, uh, for example, developing the matrix uh, for uh, nuclear waste. So uh, we uh, should always uh, remember that we are searching or looking for not the matrix material not only for our initial uh, radionuclide but that this uh, material should contain or immobilize all the uh, chemical elements that are produced due to the uh, radioactive uh, decay chain. Uh, from another point of view, uh, we can use uh, this property of the uh, radioactive equilibrium uh, to use uh, uh, this property to produce uh, nuclear me me uh, med medical uh, uh, radionuclides uh, that have very short half-lives, so uh, we cannot produce them uh, in one facility and then transport to a um, clinic, for example. Uh, but we can uh, produce uh, the long-lived um, parental uh, radionuclide with uh, long half-life. And then, uh, due to the properties of the uh, uh, radioactive equilibrium, uh, we, can, um, uh, we can produce so-called isotope generator. So we can always uh, produce uh, the uh, daughter uh, radionuclide. We can elute it, uh, we can uh, take it off uh, for our purposes and then it will accumulate again. So for, again, from one uh, point of view, this uh, long chain of radioactive decay can be a, a problem. Uh, but from another point of view, it can be uh, very helpful uh, for uh, both medical applications or for uh, just um, uh, scientific studies uh, to use uh, radionuclide traces uh, for different, different applications. And uh, we remember that, uh, again, a different kind of uh, ionizing radiation, uh, they interact uh, with uh, matter uh, in different ways. And uh, the main ways of interaction uh, for any kind of uh, ionizing radiation, it is excitation or ionization and also uh, we should remember about the nuclear reactions. And when we uh, talk about the uh, different kinds of uh, interaction with matter, uh, we also assume uh, what is the uh, energy uh, Trans, uh, trans, uh, transfer um, or from different kind of uh, particles. For example, uh, we remember that heavy charged particles, uh, they have very high uh, lin linear energy uh, transfer. Uh, that means that uh, uh, at each part of the pathway, they lose, uh, they uh, transfer uh, a lot of energy. And uh, all uh, particles, uh, alpha particles and beta particles, they have um, uh, um, some finite, some maximum range, uh, some penetration pathway uh, in the matter. 
And uh, uh, in the case of uh, photons uh, for X-rays and gamma quanta, it is not the case. Uh, there is no uh, maximum range. Uh, they uh, penetrate through, uh, through the matter uh, with the exponential law. So we can always say, uh, we can only say uh, that the uh, flux of the uh, gamma rays of photons uh, it decreases by a, a certain value, but I, I, we cannot say that it is absolutely uh, zero. And uh, these properties uh, of um, different uh, interactions uh, of uh, ionizing radiation uh, we can use for uh, medical applications and for uh, some uh, material research study, etc. There is a nice example of how um, uh, the penetration ability of photons, in this case it is X-rays, uh, depends on the uh, uh, material property. And it is also, again, uh, a very uh, important and uh, useful uh, consequences of the uh, of the effect of ionizing radiation. So the, the lighter the um, matter, uh, the less uh, the interaction of um, photons uh, with this uh, matter. And uh, if we have very dense material, like a metal ring in this uh, picture, uh, we can um, see that the interaction is um, uh, very intensive. And uh, when we talk about the uh, consequences, uh, we should remember that it's not only just um, uh, absorption of the energy, but uh, due to this absorption, we can produce uh, a, a, a different effects in the matter. Uh, for example, if uh, there is a, a release of, um, of, uh, of the uh, electron uh, due to different uh, uh, interactions of ionizing radiation, then uh, we have a, a vacancy in uh, orbital shells and uh, then we have a, a chain of different processes that leads either to the emission of the X-rays uh, that are characteristic for this uh, element, or uh, it can be uh, the release of, um, uh, of the electrons uh, that are located in the outer shells, so so-called Auger process. And uh, both these um, uh, processes will give us information about the chemical composition of the uh, matter, about the uh, chemical state of our element and the uh, local surroundings of this element. So, uh, when we uh, talk about, for example, X-ray absorption spectroscopy, it is also uh, the uh, consequence of the uh, interaction of ionizing radiation with matter. Uh, thus, uh, all this um, uh, information about the properties of the ionizing radiation, how it interacts with matter, what are the consequences of this interaction, they are very important not only uh, for uh, radiochemistry but for uh, radio but for other analytical tools for um, chemical analysis for uh, x-ray analysis and for many many other techniques uh, that you already uh, know and uh, as far as um, ion ionizing radiation itself uh, we cannot it, it's uh, non visible uh, we cannot see it we cannot feel it we cannot hear it uh, we don't have any um, sensors in our body uh, to feel uh, the ionizing radiation so we can only uh, detect it uh, by its interaction with the matter again uh, this interaction of uh, of the ionizing radiation of matter is uh, very important to understand how we can uh, detect it, uh, which methods uh, we should use uh, uh, for uh, detection and measuring uh, measurements of uh, certain radionuclides with certain properties, with certain uh, types of uh, decay. Uh, we know that um, different detectors, uh, they are based on the uh, inter different mechanisms of interaction of ionizing radiation. It is either uh, ionization uh, mechanism, and then we use uh, uh, detectors based on uh, ionization uh, of the material of the detector, 
or it can be excitation and then uh, we use uh, scintillation, uh, scintillation detectors or it can be a production of uh, defects and in this case uh, we use um, uh, track detectors, these plastic films and, and etc. So um, all these uh, detectors, uh, it is just a short representation of how we can uh, visualize uh, and uh, quantify uh, the uh, ionizing radiation again uh, by its interaction with matter. In 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 uh, in the upper uh, left uh, picture, you can see this uh, track analysis. So it is a production of uh, defects in material that we um, uh, make uh, visible by etching, and then we uh, we use. Uh, uh, just optical microscope to um, uh, see these uh, defects or it can be a radiography uh, in this case uh, it is the distribution of uh, phosphorus uh, uh, through the uh, plant and uh, we can visualize uh, how the uh, phosphorus 32 is distributed uh, in different organs of the plant and we can also uh, quantify uh, these different uh, distributions or we can use um, ionizing radiation of different types in this case uh, it is um, a semiconductor uh, principle of semiconductor detector is uh, presented or it can be uh, uh, gauges uh, gas chambers uh, filled with inert gases and then uh, it can uh, be ionized and we detect the uh, current that is produced. And finally, this uh, liquid uh, scintillation uh, technique, uh, very powerful uh, for um, analysis of alpha and beta uh, emitters in uh, environmental samples or in technological streams. Uh, oh, yeah, it, it, it is based on the excitation of the special molecules that, em, uh, that uh, emit light and this light is further uh, detected. Uh, and uh, of course uh, we uh, should know uh, the properties of ionizing radiation to protect uh, people uh, who are working with the uh, radioactivity, radioactive samples and uh, other sources of ionizing radiation. Uh, if we know uh, the uh, properties of uh, a certain uh, type of ionizing radiation, then uh, we can choose the correct uh, shielding material for, uh, for our ionizing, uh, uh, ionizing uh, source. Um, thus, it can be uh, lead, it can be uh, water, it can be aluminium or, or organic. Depend, uh, it depends on the properties of our uh, ionizing uh, radiation. So we uh, again we remember that alpha particles uh, they have very slow, uh, very low, uh, very short penetration uh, range, and thus um, uh, we can use uh, just uh, uh, gloves uh, to work with alpha. Uh, radionuclides, uh, but if uh, it is powder, uh, then we should protect our um, uh, our breathing <laughs> organs, uh, so uh, to not to inhale um, the, this powder containing uh, alpha emitters. So we should uh, use some respirators, uh, etc. If we are working with beta particles, then we should, uh, if it is very, uh, if it is a very high active source uh, with high activity then we should use either plastic um, shield, uh, shieldings or it can be some glass uh, shieldings or it can be aluminium shielding so some uh, light materials to prevent the uh, formation of the bremsstrahlung or, or this uh, stopping uh, radiation uh, if it is a gamma radiation, uh, we should use either uh, the lead, very dense uh, material, or a very thick um, uh, layer of uh, concrete and, and some other materials. And neutrons, as far as uh, they are interacting very actively with uh, very light atoms like uh, protons, uh, thus uh, we should use uh, the materials that contains a lot of protons like water, plastics, or concrete. Uh, and uh, also to, uh, to absorb neutrons absolutely, uh, we can add some uh, neutron absorption uh, materials like cadmium, boron, etc. And 
based on the properties uh, of the ionizing radiation, how it interacts with matter and uh, for uh, human beings it is very important how it interacts with water because uh, most of our body is uh, just water. Uh, we uh, can estimate the effect of ionizing radiation on our health. And uh, for people uh, who are working with ionizing radiation, there are three pillars of uh, radiation, radiation protection. Justification, uh, ALARA principle and uh, the dose limits. So uh, that means that if we uh, can uh, do this work uh, without uh, uh, using the ionizing radiation, then we should avoid uh, this use. If uh, it is not possible, so if we uh, we are doing some uh, medical treatments or uh, if it is um, re uh, reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel or some other uh, operations with the radioactive materials that we cannot avoid, uh, then there is a uh, um, uh, principle of LARA and dose limits. So LARA principle, it, is, it means that we should use for research studies, for example, or for medical uh, tre treatment, uh, uh, the uh, amount of uh, radioactive substances as low as uh, reasonably uh, achievable. So it means that uh, the activity should be uh, low, uh, but not, um, uh, but, but it should be enough to make this uh, treatment, to make this uh, study. And uh, when uh, uh, we are working with uh, very high activity, then uh, we are talking about the dose limits for uh, authorities, for authorized persons, uh, for personnel uh, of uh, category A uh, in Russian classification, etc. When we uh, talk about the uh, different types of uh, radiation, we of course uh, remember about the spontaneous fusion and the neutron-induced uh, uh, nuclear reactions. Also, we remember that it is not only uh, neutron-induced uh, nuclear reactions, uh, there are uh, other uh, reactions induced by protons, by photons and by uh, many other uh, particles, uh, but uh, the main idea of uh, the uh, the main parameters of the nuclear reactions uh, is the cross section. So the probability of uh, this uh, uh, of this reaction and um, yeah the energetic effects of the uh, reactions and uh, very important for us as for uh, people who are using. Uh, nuclear energy, so uh, nowadays uh, 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 more than 10% of the global uh, production of energy is nuclear. Uh, for us, uh, the very important reactions, uh, nuclear reactions, it is neutron-induced fission uh, reactions. Uh, because uh, on these reactions, the whole nuclear fuel cycle uh, is based and uh, when we are talking about the production of the nuclear energy, uh, we should think not only about the nuclear power plant, of course uh, uh, the energy is produced there, but uh, uh, the whole nuclear fuel cycle, uh, it is um, uh, operations that are starting from uh, the uranium ore mining and then uh, to uranium uh, purification, uh, its conversion to uranium hexafluoride, uh, enrichment with uh, uranium-235 isotope, then production of fuel only after all this operation, very long chain, <coughs> uh, sorry, for, uh, of operations, uh, we can put our fuel in nuclear power plant and produce electricity. But after uh, this, uh, the story uh, doesn't end. Uh, then uh, after work in nuclear reactor, the spent nuclear fuel uh, goes uh, to the um, hold, uh, holding ponds uh, in the uh, nuclear that are located in nuclear power plants, and after some storage, it can, the spent nuclear fuel can go either for direct disposal, uh, and then we are talking about the open nuclear fuel cycle, or it can be uh, reprocessed or recycled to extract valuable components, so fissile materials like uranium and plutonium accumulated in this fuel, 
and we can produce a fresh fuel for nuclear power plant and produce more and more energy. And in this case, uh, we're talking about the closed nuclear fuel cycle. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, when we are using uh, the radioactive substances at any facilities, we always produce uh, a radioactive waste and we should remember about it. Uh, one of the important uh, parts of the uh, closed nuclear fuel is the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel. And um, uh, what is the uh, idea why we should uh, reprocess the spent nuclear fuel? Not only for extraction of uh, uranium and plutonium, but also to decrease uh, the radiotoxicity of our uh, radioactive waste. If we uh, extract uh, all the long-lived uh, radionuclide from our uh, spent nuclear fuel, from our high-level waste, then we can reach the uh, radio equivalency uh, uh, already in 300 years. So radio equivalency means that we uh, put the same amount of activity uh, or toxic, radiotoxic materials as we take from, from the uh, Earth. So uh, that means that after 300 years, if we uh, reprocess and we extract all the um, long-lived radionuclide, already after 300 years, the radiotoxicity of the uh, resulted uh, radioactive waste will be as low as the radiotoxicity of natural uranium ore. So uh, we will um, uh, uh, put back uh, the same amount of activity as we take from the Earth. But without reprocessing this time, uh, will take uh, this process will take uh, up to uh, hundreds uh, of thousands of years. So uh, it is very important to reprocess spent nuclear fuel to uh, decrease uh, the long-term uh, hazard uh, of high-level waste and radioactive waste in general. Also, uh, due to the uh, very low emissions of uh, CO2. Uh, we know that the nuclear energy is a very clean source of energy and also uh, despite of the, all the uh, negative information about the, um, uh, about the deaths due to the action of ionizing radiation, the actual uh, death rate uh, caused by, by the application of nuclear energy is very low. It, it is one of the lowest and it is uh, hundreds times lower than the death rate from the traditional uh, sources of energy like coal, coal and oil. Um, and of course, uh, I should uh, mention that uh, the modern uh, technique that used uh, radionuclide, uh, they applied in nuclear medicine and uh, we can uh, see, we can uh, uh, make diagnostic very, uh, yeah, very accurate uh, diagnostics uh, of um, not only on oncological diseases, but also uh, some neurological studies, cardiology, and many, many other uh, studies. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, Radio pharmaceuticals, uh, nu uh, nuclear medicine is uh, very uh, uh, promising and very developing uh, area of the of the uh, radiochemistry of the uh, nuclear uh, science in general. Uh, also, it can be used not only for uh, diagnostics but also for treatment of uh, of the uh, in this case uh, uh, oncological uh, diseases so uh, you can see that uh, these uh, applications uh, of uh, the radionuclides of the ionizing radiation is uh, 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 very powerful and all these applications uh, they are coming uh, from the uh, fundamental uh, properties of the ionizing radiation how it interacts with matter uh, what is the uh, half life uh, what are the energies of these uh, particles that uh, uh, interact with matter, etc., etc. So, uh, I hope that uh, from all, all our uh, lectures and uh, seminars, uh, you uh, now 
have these uh, feelings, uh, uh, how it is important to understand the fundamental properties of the uh, uh, radiant clouds, of the uh, ionizing radiation, uh, how it interacts with matter. And of course, uh, one of the uh, idea of the uh, or not only of this course, but also for uh, the special courses on the uh, modern uh, radiochemistry, etc., is the uh, philosophical, let's say, idea uh, that uh, the modern uh, science, uh, it is not a pure uh, science of only chemistry of, 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 or just pure physics. It is always uh, a collaboration or cooperation uh, of uh, many experts in different uh, fields of, um, of science. And only uh, with this cooperation we can uh, produce uh, the new knowledge in the, uh, at the very edge of the science, or the very edge of our understanding of the world. So, uh, it was a very short lecture for uh, today, but I hope that uh, it was uh, useful uh, for you to have this impression uh, about the uh, basics of uh, radiochemistry, that uh, all the uh, knowledge that you gain, uh, they are uh, useful for your uh, application, for your uh, studies, for your, um, uh, yeah, for, um, for your future studies, for uh, the science that you are interested in. So, uh, uh, I, I would like to uh, thank you all for this uh, semester to join us in this semester and also I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So, goodbye and see you next time.